everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm previewing a game that I think is up for pre-order from Stonemaier right now. They did send me a review copy of this one. This is the new edition of Libertalia, which now has solo play, which is what I'll be showing you in this playthrough. And I also have a separate review video if you want to watch that. And if you like the content of the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and at least two exclusive videos every month. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So the core play of Libertalia is controlled by these crew cards here. You start the game with six of them. And how it works in both competitive and with the Automa is that you each have the exact same cards. In this case, you take the Automa deck when you're playing solo and you draw six of them at random and then take the six matching cards from your own 40 card deck. Each player has their own unique deck with the same 40 cards. And the concept of the game is you're trying to get the most treasure, collect the most loot uh, over the course of three voyages. The first voyage goes through four days. You'll see down here it says voyage one through three. Uh, the second voyage is five days long. The third voyage six day. And each day is one chance to play a card and also one chance to get one of these loot tokens, uh, some of which give you money, some of which actually hurt you, specifically these uh, purple ones, the relics. The basic idea is each player secretly picks one of the cards in their hand. Now for the Automa, you're going to get a random card for the orange pilferer ability. And you organize them from left to right, smallest to highest number. And first you resolve any of the morning abilities with the little sun from left to right. Okay, from lowest number to highest number, those get resolved. Then you resolve any dusk abilities, which these people don't have, but it looks like a setting sun from right to left. But that's also when you get the loot. So generally speaking, the highest number We'll get first choice of a loot token, and I have them organized in the Automa's priority order. So they're going to try to get the leftmost one generally, except for a few exceptions. And then again, with some exceptions, the card you play goes to your ship, which doesn't generally matter if they just have a sun or a dusk ability. But if they have a night ability, which is just a moon, then they'll resolve that every day of the voyage. So you can activate it like three or four or five times. And if they have an anchor ability like uh, this collector right here, this is kind of end of voyage scoring if the person is still around because you do have ways to remove uh, crew members from the island where you're selecting stuff and also from your ship where they might score points for you. At the end of each round, you resolve all the abilities for the loot you've gotten and any other points you've gained and you lock it into your treasure chest. So until then, it's money that can be like messed with and stolen. But uh, once you lock it in, that's your score for the journey. You do that twice more and then you see who won the game. And how the Automa works, they've got their cards organized left to right from smallest to largest number. And you'll see there are these kind of deciding factors on the back of the Automa deck. After you've chosen your card, you pick a random card for the Pilfer. All they care about is the number. They don't do any special abilities. They're just stealing loot and kind of messing with the order of things. And then you use this to determine which card the Automa plays. It's going to be based on what type of loot combinations are out there. I'll explain that when we get to it but it'll tell you which card they play starting from their rightmost or leftmost cards, sometimes caring about ones that have these little cannon symbols on them. It's all pretty straightforward, so we'll see how it goes. And one final thing, this is new to the uh, new edition. You have this reputation track. Uh, I'm the blue player, so I was randomly put on the left spot of the middle, and the Otoma is purple. The other colors are just kind of fill-in colors because when you move on the reputation track from abilities, you still like push the other people around. And basically, if you are further right on the reputation track, like the purple Otoma is right now, you win ties in that your character will go further right and will be earlier to get the loot when you go to the dusk phase. So like if we both played card 30, their card 30 would be further right than mine, they would get first choice of loot. But on the positive side of having a worse reputation, you get more money at the beginning of every voyage. So I'm going to get 10 gold to start, and they're only going to get 9. And then if you go too far to the left or right, each space you would lose of reputation beyond this leftmost space, you have to lose one money. Each space you would gain, you have to gain one money for uh, having a higher reputation. And last thing, let's talk about the loot effects. Those are pretty important to understand. I'm playing on the stormy side of the board, which tends to have, and actually, there we go, <laughs> uh, which tends to have more uh, interactive abilities. So a lot of these are pre-printed, but then you have four Otoma uh, tiles that you use. And I'll show that they also have a calm side of the board that is like usually a little bit simpler and a little bit less interactive for the players. So I chose to do the uh, stormy side, but I could flip the entire board over, flip all of these over. I guess you could even like mix and match. <laughs> that's okay. So the chest at the end of the voyage, that's the anchor symbol, gives you four money plus one for each map token you got. The barrel during the dusk phase, when you get it, you can discard it to gain two reputation. The Atoma never does, or you can just gain two money at the end of the voyage. 
The relic I mentioned is the one bad one. Every night phase, so if you got a relic on the first day, this would happen at the end of every day, you lose one money, so you don't want to get them early. The hook either lets you discard a character from your own ship, because there are characters that if you play them, they then will hurt you later in the voyage, or you can gain four money, and the Otomo, again, always just chooses the money. The save is another discard one, but this time it goes after the highest ranked anchor character from your opponent's ship, except the Quartermaster, they mentioned that because the Quartermaster is actually bad for the other player, so you would like them to discard it or you just get three money. The amulet gives you two money or four if you have less reputation than the Otoma or vice versa for when the Otoma is the one playing. And finally, the map is a winner take all one. If you have the most map tokens, it's worth eight, but then all your maps go away. If you don't have the most maps or you're tied, you keep your map tokens and try to win the majority next round. And that's basically it. Let's get into the play. So first, let's look at the uh, characters I have available for this first voyage. The numbers are fairly high. It goes up to 40, down from one. The recruiter lets me play a character from my hand directly to my ship. So that's a good way to get like a character who has a nice ability, but a really low number onto my ship to do something. Like for example, I could get the explorer down to benefit from his map ability. The surgeon gets a character back from my graveyard to my hand, which is amazing, but probably won't apply for this entire first voyage because it won't be discarded yet. So I might want to keep her because you only use four of your crew members. And then uh, the other two will pay forward into the next voyage. The collector has the highest number out of everybody. And it's got a ship ability. If you have two, three, four, or five different types of loot tokens in your ship, you gain more money. So the more diverse your uh, holdings and grabbings, the better the reward. The explorer during dusk, if I gain a map token, I gain one reputation. So that's a pretty tough one because maps are very valuable. Most people grab them. So to win it with a 10 is unlikely. But the uh, anchor ability is that I can count one map token as two. So make it easier to win that majority for eight points. The Brute is crazy powerful. It discards the rightmost character on the island. Uh, it does give them a reputation as a consolation prize, but they don't get to take a loot because they are gone from the island. And finally, the Brawler is awesome. Its day ability is to discard a Brawler from an opponent's ship and to gain two reputation. So you want to be the last one to play a Brawler, but every night phase, it gives you one money. So if you can play it on like the first day of a voyage, it could be worth five or six even. So my general strategy is going to be maybe to save the Surgeon and maybe the Brawler. I'd love for the... Uh, the Otoma to play their brawler first and then I can take it out with my brawler or I can just wait until a later voyage and get bigger bonuses from having the longer days. And looking at the loots for the two days, the two most dangerous days are one and two because they've got this relic and remember that's going to give me a minus money every turn. Whereas the relic in day four, I barely care about. It's not going to hurt me really. And then the map is worth eight all by itself because there is only one map. So that is going to be the one that wins. So I'd love to be first there, but with the Otoma right of me on the reputation track, uh, they can probably grab it. So I think first I'm going to play the Collector. It's a very high number, gives me a pretty good chance. I mean, gosh, if I don't get either of these and I get stuck with the Relic, that would be ridiculous. Then I play the topmost card just for it's what the heck, really? Pilferer, you played a 38. There were only, what, five cards that were higher than what I played? And now I check the Otoma's preference. First, I see if there are three of the same type of loot at the day. The first three loot tokens, chests, hooks, and maps are kind of like the good loot. That's one type. Then like mediocre loot. And then the bad relic. Those are the three types. So clearly we have uh, two okay loots and one bad one. So that's not going to apply. Then we see, are there two bad loots? No, there's only one. Is there a good loot and a bad loot? No, it's all mediocre and bad. Is there a good loot? No. So finally, we use this last one, which always applies. Is there at least one bad loot? Yes. So they're playing the third character from the right, which is their recruiter. This is going to work out great. They are going to get stuck with the relic. So again, we organize these from left to right, smallest number to largest. And first, we're going to resolve any day abilities. Play the lowest ranked character with an anchor ability from Otama's hand directly to her ship. And we check the Collector has an Anchor ability and the Explorer, that's the lowest rank. So the Explorer is going to go straight to their ship, which means the next day when choosing a loot token, the Otoma uses the priority list above. So they're going to prefer a map, which is already their highest preference anyway. And then one, Otoma's map token counts as two, basically the same as mine. Usually the Otoma characters have very similar abilities to the player characters. And there are no more Suns resolved, so now we do Dusk abilities. The Pilfer just takes the most valuable one and he does nothing with it. It's just gone back into the loot bag. Now I get to take this barrel, and uh, this is an anchor ability, so it won't resolve until the end of the entire voyage. But just to remind you, I want to have a bunch of different types of loot. So if I can avoid just getting more barrels, that would be great. And finally, the Automa is stuck getting the relic, and his recruiter goes to his ship, just like the collector went to mine. Okay, next we resolve knight abilities of characters on our ship. We don't have any for the collector. The explorer says maps will be a priority in a minute, but we don't have to worry about that. 
And then they do lose one money because of the knight ability of their relic. Ha ha ha. All right, next we're coming to the other most dangerous one. I'd love to get that map and just totally <laughs> mess up the AI with their uh, explorer waiting for it. So I'm going to make the assumption that they'll play a very high card and get my brute out there to punch it out of existence. And that doesn't mean that I'll get the map because the random pilferer card, oh, is actually very low. Perfect. And this time we've got one good loot and one bad loot. So we're going here and yes, they are playing their rightmost character, which usually they would want to do because they know, ooh, they really want that good loot. That's going to be their collector 35. And yeah, this could not have gone better for me. So I do uh, sun abilities, day abilities first. Pilfer doesn't have one. I discard the rightmost character. Bye bye collector. That means they won't get the uh, anchor bonus. That means they won't get to take any loot this round. They get nothing. And then on my choice, I get the map. Thank you very much. That'll be a strong eight points for me. And not that it matters, but the pilfer takes that and that just gets thrown away. And once again, the only knight ability is them losing a money from their relic. Ouch. All right, I kind of used all my best stuff, so I'm probably just going to play it slow now. Uh, we've got here where the hook is the best. That's worth four. The saber is worth three. Although, ooh, if they get the saber, they'll throw away my collector and I won't get the bonus money from different loot tokens, which makes me think I want to play kind of middle of the road here to get the saber myself. And let's see, Brawler, I want to save for the next voyage. Explorer, I don't really care about. Maybe I just go Explorer, although I might get stuck with a barrel, but I don't mind that too much. Yeah. Let's do that, because Recruiter's not really doing anything for me. Well, I guess I might play Recruiter next. Oh, man, but if I play Recruiter, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to waste the Brawler or the Surge, and we'll see how it goes. But a 10 for me, a random Pilfer card, is an 8. Thank you for playing so low. You could have that barrel for sure. And this time, it's one good and two mediocre. So we go to the one good, which means the first cannon is what the Automa will play. Oh, and this is... <laughs> This is hilarious. They're going to play the Brute uh, to discard the rightmost character on the island. That may be the Brute. Oh, I forgot that my Brute should have given them plus one reputation, which actually is pretty much just bad for them because they're still right of me. That didn't change. But now they'll get eight money at the beginning of the next voyage instead of nine. But yeah, the Brute goes here and then he's the only sun ability. So he throws himself away and he gains another reputation. I feel like this first voyage might be mine. You know, Dusk Abilities says if I gain a map token, gain two reputation. I'm not going to, but I will get a hook. And then the Pilfer just throws away the other ones. And for the hook, I resolve it right now. So I do have to get the money now, which is unusual for loot. It says discard a character from your ship or gain four. There's no bad characters on my ship, so I'm definitely getting four money. And the Otomo is losing one. Gosh, they seriously managed not to get anything except a relic. Okay, our last one. Uh, this chest would be worth five for me because I have one map. The Saber worth three, and this would only be worth minus one because the day's about to end, or the voyage, I mean. So what the hey, let's play the uh, Surgeon and see how things go. I'm 99% sure the Otomo will play their Surgeon as well, and they'll get the map, I mean the treasure chest. Okay, the Pilfer went super low again, and once again, it's one good, one bad, which is, oh, they're actually playing the first cannon, Otomo, no! So they're playing their Brawler, which is awesome. Now my Brawler is going to be able to just be amazing. Um, although, actually, whoops, I forgot the Otomo sometimes have different rank based on their sun abilities. We'll see that in a second. I know what I'm realizing. I probably shouldn't have gotten the four money for the hook. I could have thrown away my own Brute and then had the Surgeon get it back for me for a future round. That Brute is so amazing. Yeah, you know what? Forget the four money. I'd rather be able to destroy the Otoma again in a future round. So to clarify what I'm undoing, I use the hook to discard a character from my own ship, the Brute. And then now I'm resolving Sun Ability. So the Otoma first, discard your Brawler, that's mine, from your ship. If you do, they gain two reputation. If they can't, no effect, their rank becomes 37. So they are going to get that treasure chest before me. And then my ability, return a character from your graveyard to your hand. So I get the Brute, who, uh, because I discarded them with the hook, was in my graveyard. All right, now uh, they're going to go first, then me, then the Pilfer. So they're clearly getting the treasure chest. I'll go ahead and get the Saber, which forces me to discard the highest ranked uh, anchor character from their ship. Oh, and that's the Explorer, <laughs> who was going to uh, double one of their map tokens. They don't have any, so that was a waste of uh, my things. I don't get any money from the Saber now. Okay, now we resolve Knight Abilities. The Atoma gains one from the Brawler and loses one from their Relic, so nothing doing there. And I still don't have any Knight Abilities. And now we go to Anchor Abilities, because it is the end of the voyage. So the Collector says if you have two, three, four, or five different types of loot in your ship, gain one, three, five, or ten. Oh, wait, did I throw away my hook? Yeah, I definitely had a fourth type. Okay, so I got four types, which means five bonus money. Uh, the Explorer is going to double my map token, but it doesn't matter because I already had the majority. And then the Hook and the Saber already did their abilities when I took them. But the barrel, because I didn't use it for reputation, is worth two, and the map is worth eight, because I have the most. But that also means I don't get to keep it, so that's ten more, and all these are gone. And I discard all of the played people on my ship to the graveyard. 
The Otomo, meanwhile, is uh, getting four plus one per map token for their treasure chest. So that's just four, and then these go away. And their people are also in the graveyard. So, ouch, they got 10 money and I got 25. That's one of the soundest thrashings ever given the Otomo in the first voyage. And we lock that in, so they've got 10 money and the actual coins go away. And here we go for me... 25, and that is the end of the first voyage. We're about one third through the game, although again, the second and third voyage have more days to do. And the Otoma keeps their Surgeon, plus six more random cards, and I'll grab these same cards for my matching deck. I'm just gonna order them, so we got four, 12, 18, 19, 27, 40. It's gonna be tough for me to show all my cards because I kept three thanks to that little doctor last minute change I did. Yeah, that is a lot to choose from. Let's go into our new powers as we get ready for the next journey. So Recruiter remember, lets me play another card. Brute knocks somebody out. Brawler gets me consistent money, especially now that their brawler is gone. Innkeeper takes a character from my ship and puts them back in my hand, which is great when you have a negative one on your ship or you just want to get a really good character to use again. The officer says you have 12 or more doubloons, gain two reputation, otherwise gain doubloons until you have a total of 12. Ooh, that'd be a nice one to play early potentially. If the gunner discard a character of your choice from any ship, if you choose an opponent's ship, lose one reputation. If you choose one of your characters, gain one so I can get rid of one of their strong anchors, although they have the same ones as me, so I don't think either of us have any strong anchors. Necromancer lets you get rid of a relic, the negative ones to get a character back from your graveyard, so that is an amazing safety valve if uh, <laughs> I get an early relic. Watchman lets me switch a loot token from the current day to the next one, so if I see the Otoma is about to get something I really want, I can like uh, switch it in with something mediocre. And then finally, Governor is the 40, the highest card in the game, but it makes you discard all characters from your ship and gain one reputation for each one discarded, which can be good or bad, depending on what you have on your ship. And here's our loot distribution. We've got, oh, a hook and a map, two <laughs> relics. I can see myself using my Necromancer after that day. Another hook and a map combo. And then uh, we didn't see any amulets in the last voyage. Those are worth two or four if you're further left on the reputation track. So for me right now, they'd be worth four. For the Otoma, only two. So I'm not too worried about playing super high this round. And per the reputation track, I'm getting 10 money to start this voyage. And the Atoma is getting seven. Is uh, having more reputation worth it? See my separate review video to hear my thoughts, because I definitely have a lot to say about that. But for now, let's get back to play it. So yeah, for this day, I'm not in too much of a hurry. So I'd either like to play the officer. He's going to get me two doubloons. Uh, and this is probably the best chance to get a bonus from him, because I'm only going to get more money from here. Or the Brawler to get one free money every round. Ah, that seems good. Yeah, let's get the Brawler and play as quickly as possible. And the random Peddler card. Ooh, is a 21. I will get a choice before them. I've been very lucky with the Peddler draws for sure. Okay, then this is two good and one normal, which is this one. So second from their right, which happens to be their Surgeon. All right, so no sun ability to discard a brawler from an opposing ship. No, there aren't any ones. They already played theirs. Oh, and the Atomatus gains five from their Surgeon because they don't ever uh, mess with their discard pile, so that's nice. And then they also get the hook, and they will just uh, use it to get four money. They never use it to get rid of a character on their ship. And I'll get the map. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Although I guess if they get the other map, we'll just be tied, and both of us will get nothing, and it'll pay forward. And uh, it's going to go to my ship to give me one money in the night phase into second. And yep, night phase, there we go. Thank you very much, Brawler, for entertaining the shipmates. Okay, now we get to this day. I imagine the Otoma is going to play their governor to really avoid the relic, but I don't care that much. I'll just play, uh, again, my Necromancer to get rid of it soon. Well, it could be tricky and play the Watchman and switch in something for a relic so I don't get it. I want to do that. Sure, that'd be kind of fun. A random peddler is definitely going, or pilfer is definitely going to get a uh, relic. The Otomo, we got two bad, so they're going to play their second cannon. Interesting. And just to show you, because this is an edge case, whenever a uh, instruction cannot be followed, you play the one furthest along that you can play. So here they don't have a second cannon, so they'll just play their rightmost cannon. Their Watchman, what? Because they're further on the reputation track, they are there. This is interesting. <laughs> what else is going to play out? Let me see what the Otoma does before I do mine. It says, Otoma gains one loot from among all the available tokens for the current day and the next day. Oh, okay. So they'll like automatically get the hook or the map as though they were like switching it in and then grabbing it. So me switching isn't going to really affect them. They'll get whatever they want anyway. So, ooh, they prefer, they prefer hooks over maps. So let's uh, guarantee that I have the map majority here. And do I want to, yeah, you know what? I think I want to throw a relic into day three just to maybe get them with it next time. Oh, wait, they're going to move the best loot to the next day anyway, I just realized. So <laughs> I guess that map's not going to stay there, but that's fine. So they're going to gain the hook and get four money. And then uh, they move the map over here. I'll get the sword. 
and they don't have any uh, anchor people to throw away, so I'm just getting three money for that. And then the pilfer gets that, not that we care. All right, so that was actually pretty good for the Otoma. Nice trickery there. And martial art to entertainment, give me one money from the brawler. So, oof, now this has become a pretty valuable day three. If I can get that map, I lock down my majority to get eight. And if I play really poorly, I get the relic, although I still have the uh, necromancer. So, ooh, I got a good idea. I'm going to play the brute that I uh, saved last time. Because if they're right most, I can knock them out. They won't get anything. I don't care if the pilfer gets the map because they're not actually in contention for the majority. So this is the play right here. In fact, if the pilfer got the map and I got the barrel, that would be worth more money for me. They did get a very high card. Oh, wait, I might throw away their card. Darn it. Pilferer. <laughs> and yeah, let's see. It's one good, one bad. They're playing their second. That's going to be what? Ah, the necromancer. Darn it. Oh, this didn't work out. <laughs> so yeah i uh, discard the pilfer and they would gain one reputation but they don't have any and then what they just gain six for their necromancer give me a break it seems like it's going to be the voyage that i lose okay and then they're getting the maps and that will be tied and that'll pay forward into next round sadly we don't have our explorer and then i'll get this i said i want to gain reputation uh, i'm going to keep that for two money at the end of this round and you know the drill the gift keeps on giving one money for my brawler all right, two left. The amulets are worth four for me, and the chest is worth five for either of us because we each have one map. So I don't care too much about being super high for either of these. I almost want to worry more about what I'm going to get for next time. So let's see. The officer won't help me at all. The innkeeper would be great to like get the brute back or the brawler, uh, but I don't want to do it this round because I'll definitely get that relic. Uh, the necromancer won't do anything for me. The gunner can discard somebody from a ship. I mean, I don't really want to. Actually, I guess it would get me low reputation. Sure, I'll play the gunner. All right, and the pilfer. Yep, I assumed they'd be ahead of me. There's another one good, one bad. So they're playing their rightmost. That's the governor for 40. Wow. Oh, so I guess I'll be getting the relic. No, that's okay. All right, so I discard a character of my choice from any ship. And none of these are doing anything for them at this point. I just want to lose reputation because if I discarded one of my own cards, I'd gain a reputation. I'm just digging into this negative thing because now I get 11 money at the beginning of the voyage instead of 10, as long as I don't go all the way left to this negative spot. What's the governor doing? Discards all characters from her ship except those with a anchor. Uh, they just have two characters on the ship and neither with an anchor. Oh, so I guess my gunner discarding one actually kind of hurt them a little bit because now they're going to gain one reputation for each character discarded this way. And since they're already at the right, that's two bonuses, two money. So I cost them one money. Ha ha ha. But then, of course, the governor is grabbing them the chest. The pilfer grabs that. And I'm going to lose one money today and tomorrow. But the brawler cancels it out. It's not a big deal. OK, and one more day. These are worth four for me. And that's worth three. The funny thing is, the Otoma is going to prefer the uh, Amulet. Actually, no, they're not. Interesting. I just looked at the loot priority. That makes more sense, because that's only going to be worth two for them. And that's going to be worth three. So I literally don't care what I get. In fact, I'd rather have a lower number. So let's go innkeeper and get back somebody awesome for next round. And the pilfer goes with a 20. And these are three of a kind, all mediocre. So they'll play their leftmost. Oh, their innkeeper as well. That uh, makes some sense, doesn't it? Uh, but they are right of me. Okay, so choose a character on my ship and return them to my hand. And yeah, now seeing that the brute was kind of a mixed bag, I'm going to take the brawler back. Yes, I'm losing the last money for this round, but that'll get me a six money for next round if I play her first, since it's a six day voyage. The Otomo, meanwhile, gains one reputation and two money. So that'll be three money since they're already at the rightmost end of the track. Okay, Pilferer takes that, and we each get an amulet. That's worth two for them, four for me. Ha ha ha. All right, that's a nice, easy round to do. The hooks were already resolved, and they don't have any anchor abilities. We both have one map, so we're just keeping those for next round. That's worth two for them, and that's worth four, plus one for the map, five. So overall, they've got 10, 20, 30, 35, 38. Great score. They're up to 48 overall after the second voyage. Well, they're only bringing forward two cards. Not many options there. Meanwhile, I have to lose one from my relic and no brawler to help me gain it back. And these characters don't do anything. Let's see, the saber, I already got the money. I think I did. Uh, so this is four. Uh, this just hangs around, and that's two. So I only get six more. Ouch. Yeah, that was a much rougher round for me. What is that? It's 15, 21. So I'm at 46, two behind them. Man, they caught up. But I am stacked. <laughs> I've got five cards plus the other six we're about to get, including the highest card uh, in the entire game, and they don't have a copy. The recruiter's higher than both of the cards they kept. The brawler's higher than both of the cards they kept. So I think I should be able to burst ahead in Voyage 3. All right, going to the final voyage with the Otoma slightly ahead. Let's see which six new crew members we get. A whole bunch is the answer. Uh, let's go look at what they do on my side of things. All right, so the new ones, uh, we got the Carpenter. Lose half your doubloons, rounded down, but then gain 10. Ooh. 
So if I use that like as my first card, I would lose six, but then gain ten later. That's pretty cool. The Smuggler is a nice one. It just lets you steal a loot from the current day and then go away. So he kind of like breaks the entire order of things. Aristocrat gains you two reputation, which actually I don't mind it now because I'm going to get my 11 money in a second. And then I don't care if my reputation is low. And then if you're the only player to have Aristocrat, you gain five. Otherwise, you lose three. Ooh, maybe I can get rid of theirs or something. And then Infantry, if it's the rightmost character, you gain five. Um, let's see, they're going to have a 30 and a 32 that they could play before the Infantry, whereas I've got the Governor. Merchant, discard one, two, or three identical loot tokens to gain one, four, or nine money. That's not that great, unless I get like a lot of relics. And then Treasurer, gain one for each barrel, each amulet, and each chest in your ship. Might want to go for those a bit more. All right, look at what's on offer. Uh, this first day I don't care too much about, because that's worth four, maybe five or six, depending on maps. Oh, that's right, we all have a map, so I guess it'll be worth more. The hook's worth four, and <laughs> that's worth four for me since I'm left of the Otoma. So I'll probably just play my Brawler to get her out. And just to mention it again, I'm getting 11 doubloons at the start of the voyage, and they're only getting seven. Let's see if that's enough of a bonus to get me ahead of them. And he actually, I'm not playing my Brawler first, I'm going to play this Carpenter. So I'll lose half my doubloons rounded down. That'll only be five, but then I'll gain 10 as long as they don't ever uh, throw them away like with a sword. And the Pilfers, oh, go into a nine. Nice little bonus there. And Atoma's got two good and a mediocre, so they're third from the left. Or sorry, I should have said from the right, which will be the Merchant. So they're definitely going to have first choice to get that treasure chest, but that's great. They've lost one of their higher people already. All right, so I lose half my doubloons, rounded down. Again, that is five. And let's see, if Atoma has a loot token from this list, they don't. She discards it uh, and then does some other stuff. Okay, otherwise she just goes to rank 40, so whatever, it's a 40. They'll take the treasure chest. I'll get the hook and they'll get the amulet. And of course, they'll use the hook to get four money right away. All right, into day two, we've both got one map. So whoever gets this map will probably split these ones, I would guess, will get the eight money. So I definitely don't want that 16 point swing. So my choices are kind of, do I throw down the smuggler to just grab it, or do I try to play higher than them, which would take playing my governor to be sure. Let's uh, throw down the smuggler and grab it during the day phase. Pilfer will be the one, okay. All right, now Talma is one good, so it'll be second from the right, which is their treasurer. They're going to gain one money for each barrel, amulet, and chest token on their ship, uh, which, yeah, they definitely already have at least one of those. So more reason for me to get a sword to stop them from killing my carpenter and for me to get rid of their treasurer. But uh, in any case, I get to grab something first. I'm going to grab this map, and then I just run away. And now we go to the regular dusk order. They're going to get an amulet, which is only worth two for them. That's great. And Pilfer gets that. All right, next is a terrible day. I really want to get that sword so they don't throw away my carpenter. And I really don't want to get the relics. And crud, I just realized I can't really use my governor because if I do, he'll throw away my carpenter and I won't get the 10 money, but I'll still have lost five. Ah, that was definitely a risk maybe I shouldn't have taken. I'll go with my aristocrat. That's the highest one that they have. But if they play it too with reputation bonus they have on me, they will uh, go first. All right, and 15 from the pilfer. And wow, look at this. Usually for two bads, they have uh, the rightmost, but here they're doing the second from the left. What? Which is randomly their officer. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm gaining two reputation as the aristocrat. That's fine. That puts me still pretty far away from being right of them. And let's see. If the time has 12 or more doubloons, gain two reputation. Ooh, otherwise they go to 12. That's right. Which is great for them because they didn't get that much money, remember, from starting the voyage. So they uh, get an extra five for free. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, that should have happened first. What am I doing here? <laughs> okay, but then I'll pick first. So I'm gonna get the sword, and instead of getting me money, that throws away their treasure, which probably would have gotten them at least three anyway, so it's about the same. But the big thing is they don't get me with a sword, and they're gonna get this. So that's gonna be minus one for day three, four, five, six. Awesome. All right, going into day four, five, six. I still haven't played my brawler. That seems pretty likely to get me a map, so let's uh, do that finally. Or actually, you know what? What the heck? Let's be a little bit safer. I'll use the recruiter, which lets me play a character straight to my ship so I can get the brawler down for the one money every turn. But I have a slightly higher number for hopefully getting one of those maps. And then the pilferer is low, so that makes a map a shorty. And with good and bad, they'll play their rightmost this time, which is their aristocrat. But that worked out great. I still get to one of the maps. Okay, so let's see. I play character directly for my ship. I'm going to uh, put the brawler in there. And then the Otoma gains two reputation. That's two money for them. And we're both going to lose three money since we both played our aristocrat, unless I can get rid of mine, I guess. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to get rid of mine. I'm going to get rid of hers because then she'll gain five money and I won't. But yeah, it's a map for each of us and the relic goes away. And we've got our first knight ability. I get one money. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It's not our first knight ability. They had a relic. I think they got it on day three. So it'll take away two money, one for three, one for four. Uh, I can leave a note here if that was wrong. 
All right, and the big thing I want to avoid here is the sword, because again, they would kill... Actually, wait a second. Oh, they would kill my aristocrat. But that would mean that they would get five money. So I don't want them to kill my carpenter or my aristocrat. I want to let them get the hook, I think. Or no, I guess it's safer to play really high so that I can make sure I get something. Well, here, this won't hurt me too much. I play the infantry that is equal to their highest card. And if it's the rightmost character on the island, they'll gain five. Although if they also play their infantry, uh, I guess in that case, they'll probably get the hook. So either way, this should be fairly safe, I think. Go first way low. And that's one good, which will be, oh, they're fifth from the left. Darn it. They only have four cards. That is going to be their infantry. That works out pretty great for them. They gain three and an additional three if it's the rightmost. So they get six instead of five, like I would have gained. Then they're getting the hook for four more. But wait a second. I'm getting the sword? Wow, wow, wow. Now instead of each of us losing three, I'm going to get a bonus of five. So that worked out fantastically. And they lose one from the relic. I gain one from the brawler. And we go into the final day of the game. I don't really care too much here. I mean, clearly the hook is worth four, so I'd rather get something better. You know, I just realized I do want to play my merchant because I can discard my two swords that I already got my bonuses for. I already used them to get four money. So yeah, that's great. Because the swords and hooks resolve right when you take them. So that's excellent. Oh, Pilfer is going before me. And actually, before the will tell me too, yeah, they only have 11, 13, and 18 left. So I think uh, they might get the relic. Um, let's see. It's one good and one bad. They're second from the right. Oh, or they'll be tricky and use the smuggler. Okay, so they gain a loot token from the current day following the normal loot priority. So they're going to get four money from the hook. Okay, then I'll follow the plan, throw in my two swords for four more money. But the pilfer takes this, so I am stuck to lose one money this day. My uh, brawler will cancel that out. Whereas nothing's canceling that out. Oh, I got to make change. All right, here we go for calculating the final score. Let's uh, have things right next to each other. We'll do the Otoma first. They have no abilities that matter here. I got rid of their uh, Duchess or the other one that they had, whatever they were called. They definitely have more money than me right now. That's 24. The hook's already resolved. The relic's already done. There's only two for them because they are further right. This is four, five, six for them. So that's eight. All right, so what is that? 10, 20, 25, 31, 32. So an even 80 points. I got to get at least 34. I think that's going to happen. So I'm not getting much from my loot, am I? <laughs> the hook already happened. This already happened. I do get eight for having the most maps, which means I've got 24 and I need to get 34. I need 10 more. The merchant already happened. Infantry already happened. Recruiter already happened. Brawler already happened. Aristocrat. I have the only one. Gain five. That's going to do it because there we go. The carpenter gives me 10 more. So the 10 would have tied me. The five brings me over the top. I got 39, so that would be, oh god, math, uh, 85, that's right, beat them by exactly 5 money. And by the way, you can choose to take some free wealth or give the Automa some starting wealth to make the game harder or easier. What I do is I check how I did afterwards and see like which difficulty I beat. So in this case, I would have beat a normal Automa, but if they were a captain with 8 starting wealth, they would have beat me. So not a great showing, but not terrible either. So that was a solo playthrough of Libertalia, the new edition from Stonemaier Games, up for pre-order now. And go check out my separate review video if you want to hear what I think about this solo play for a game that was clearly originally designed for multiplayer, but how do I feel about this? But either way, good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.